Fangibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One. Good vibrations with some more thoughts about HF mobile operation with small vehicles or, in the worst case, vehicles that actually have a plastic body. The chassis may still be metal, but the body is plastic, and that gives you a very great challenge indeed for getting any kind of a ground for an unbalanced antenna. Now, by an unbalanced antenna, we mean something on the order of a vertical antenna fed against a substantial RF ground. The radiating element here is uh, oftentimes a quarter of a wavelength long and then this of course is the coaxial feed line going to your radio. Now the problem is with a substantial RF ground it's very very hard to get that in a small vehicle at high frequencies that is to say below 30 megahertz. <coughs> you ever think that's kind of ironic when I say high frequencies but below a certain cutoff point well above that it's very high and that's a whole different state of affairs although with a rag top like this vehicle I just acquired roof mounting is pretty much out of the question I mean you could run a pole right up through the rag then you'd have a leaky rag and a wet vehicle inside and you wouldn't be able to use it in the summer like a convertible ought to be used so uh, any kind of a support coming out of the top of this thing is just about out of the question. So the only real logical place that I have found in this vehicle is where the trunk, right at the top of the trunk, where there's a thin wall where, for example, a, a ball mount for a CB whip or 96 inch uh, 10 meter whip antenna might be attached but the problem again is getting this bloody radio frequency ground here. It doesn't look like the parts of this uh, vehicle are very well welded together, so I'd almost have to resort to putting radials inside the structure of the vehicle, you know, actual wires to serve as uh, ground radials. But there's a completely different solution that I thought up. Suppose that instead of being stuck in this unbalanced antenna paradigm an unbalanced antenna paradigm which to me gives rise to the notion is it the paradigm that's unbalanced or the antenna that's unbalanced or both I suggest both and I suggest maybe what ought to be considered what I ought to consider is something like a much more substantial mast attached to the back of this thing but it wouldn't even have to be metal it could be wood but it it must be attached securely to the vehicle it could be attached to the side as well possibly with a vertical antenna mount that you see in um, base station or fixed station verticals remember the old 14 AVQ vertical or the 18 V vertical I believe both were made by high gain they had those substantial base mounts you could put a mast in there and in, instead of using it as the antenna and worrying about connections to ground or anything here you would simply run your coax up through this tubing from wherever your little radio is in the vehicle and then, to remember the company called Hustler. They made vert, uh, vertical mobile antennas that had little resonators on them. And you put a different resonator on for each band. The lower part was about four feet high. And the upper part uh, depended upon the size of the resonator, which generally increased as the frequency went down. Well, suppose now that instead of just one of those things, you got two of them. And you made some kind of, you, you conjured up some kind of a mount which would allow 
them to work face to face. So you basically have two loaded mobile whip antennas horizontally and balanced with each other to make not a vertical unbalanced antenna but a balanced dipole antenna. Now I've seen this done in some fixed station applications and there's no real reason why if the uh, structure was sturdy enough robust enough here and at the mount here that it wouldn't actually work for mobile applications as well. The, the conundrum is you'd have this six, to, six or seven foot thing sticking out of the back of your vehicle. You could put it in the middle by the door and but the important thing is you run these this dipole along the axis of the travel of the car so that the direction of the car's travel is parallel to the span of the dipole antenna. You don't want to run it side to side or you're going to find yourself in trouble with somebody. Some big old semi comes along and gets gets slapped on the windshield by one side of this thing and it breaks his windshield. Joe Trucker isn't going to be very happy with you. And in a little vehicle like the PT Cruiser, I'd be easy pickings for some bully. Not that truck drivers are bullies. They're mostly really nice guys. But I think it'd be a little less nice if he got his windshield broken by some uh, errant amateur radio operator's uh, sky hook. So you run it this way, and that will also increase the wind, uh, decrease the wind load and decrease the amount of noise. Although such an antenna like this, you'd have to expect that it would be rather noisy. So you just p place two identical antennas like that. Say you get uh, the old 40 meter Hustler resonator. You get two of them. You just get two of everything. You feed the thing with coax. You might even have a ballon here if you really want to get fancy. And then a dipole, remember, is a balanced antenna. Not balan well, yeah, balanied antenna. And that type of thing uh, does not need to have this big mass that uh, to operate against. It literally radiates away the RF and is sort of like its own portable RF ground. With a ballon, you make the system truly balanced and do away with much of the requirement for a radio frequency ground in your system. It's always, of course, uh, a good idea to have an electrical ground for a variety of reasons. Number one is your own safety. Number two is RF burns. Number three is interference uh, to your radio by the vehicle's ignition system. As if uh, those three added up doesn't make for something pretty big. But I think I might uh, consider something like this. Now it'd be kind of pricey because you'd have to buy two of all these things. And if you wanted to operate multi-band, you couldn't just switch the radio. You'd have to, you'd have to fiddle with this. Um, that you'd have to stop and unscrew these things. And people, you'd get some, you'd get some looks. So you'd probably get some conversation. No doubt about that. Something worth thinking about. Something worth thinking about. First, I got to recover my health so I can actually travel and enjoy a system like this. Otherwise, the whole thing is just academic yammer. But for now, unacademic, very meaningful conversation coming from Whiskey One Good Vibrations is simply 73 and so long.